Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. You know, God is good all, all, time. Time. all the time. Amen. Amen. Well, it is a pleasure of mine to introduce the speaker for today. He is well beloved in the Missouri Annual Conference. All right, all right. And even more well beloved here at Metropolitan in Zion Amen. Church. Amen. 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 He's married to Sister Camille C. Starnes. They are parents of three children. And as, as of now, five grandchildren. All right, all right. He graduated from Livingstone College, where he received his BA degree in history. He earned a Master's of Divinity degree from Wood Seminary and a Doctor of Ministry degree from Eastern Divinity School in Birmingham, Alabama. He has held class rates at Wesley, Harrisburg, North Carolina, Evans, Metropolitan, Dennisville, South Carolina, um, Britain, Connecticut, Tompkins, Chapel, Metropolitan, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Mount Moriah, Mount Arad, Circuit, Richburg, South Carolina. He was ordained a deacon in the AME Zion Church in 1977, an elder in 1979, was elected bishop. July of 2008 at the 48th session of the General Conference as the 96th Bishop in Succession in the AME Zion Church. All right, all right. For that, he's been the Director of Evangelism of the AME Zion Church, Secretary of Evangelism, World Methodist Council, North America, Wesleyan Commission of Evangelism, Vice President of the National Council of Church of Christ. We'll have another song. And after Brother David Grossborough will have sung, the voice you will hear will be that of our own bishop, Bishop Darrell B. Starr. Now, normally, when you're in person, we'll ask you to stand as a show of respect for the office of bishop, the most celebrated office in our church. And I ask you to stand in your hearts as we receive our bishop. Amen.
church say amen. Truly we thank Brother Roseboro, Sister Shepherd, 
and our musicians for your inspiring music ministry today. To missionary supervisor, Camille Starnes, my honey bun. And by the way, uh, pastor, we have um, seven grandchildren. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> As of yet, <laughs> um, to Pastor Michael Murray, First Lady Carmen Murray, and by the way, happy birthday to Sister Murray, ministers, officers, members, and friends of the Metropolitan AME Zion Church, Kansas City. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings. Thank you, Pastor Murray, for your kind introduction, for your excellent teaching at church school last evening, for your stellar leadership, not only at Metropolitan, but also in the Missouri Conference and for giving me this opportunity to preach today. Our prayers are with those who have suffered in any way from COVID-19. And I encourage every one of us to get our vaccinations as soon as the opportunity comes. God will bring us through this pandemic. Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and 10 through 17, from the New Revised Standard Version was read in our hearing. But my text is verse 16. One verse. I'm taking in hand one verse. <laughs> and that's verse 16. It says, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Uh -huh. Today I want to talk about grace on top of grace. All right. Grace on top of grace. Uh -huh. I'm getting excited already, but let me slow down. <laughs> there is one thing about which most of us agree. It is that we all have sinned and come short of God's standard of righteousness. Yet we may not all be aware of what this really means. Because we are all sinners and because the wages of sin is death, we all deserve to spend eternity without God. That's a nice way of saying that we all deserve to go to hell. <laughs> the Bible is clear about this. It says that there is none righteous. No, not one. Consequently, none of us can earn salvation or be worthy of eternal life. That is why we all need grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is God giving to us that which we do not deserve, that which we have not earned and that of which we are not worthy. The only people in heaven 
are those who got there by grace. All right. The only people who are saved mm -hmm. are those who've been saved by grace. All right. And I am excited today because our text gives us three insights into this phenomenon called grace. First, our text gives us insight into the source of grace. The source of grace. It says, from his fullness. From his fullness. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation renders it from his abundance. All right. The contemporary English version renders it because of all that the sun is. The phrase from his fullness answers the question, from where does this grace come? Or better yet, from whom or and through whom can we receive this grace? John's gospel revealed that Jesus Christ is the word who was with God the Father in the beginning, mm -hmm. who is God the Son, who created the world and everything in it, All right. who came into the world that he created, yeah. and who became a human being mm -hmm. so that he could become the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Right. That is why John wrote, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. For the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. All right. All right. Yes. There is only one source of grace, only one person from whom grace comes and through whom we can receive grace. It is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lord of all creation, and the Savior of the world. Yes, oh, I wish I could get a witness. Because if I get enough witnesses, I go to my second point. <laughs> okay, I think I hear some witnesses. <laughs> Secondly, our text gives us insight into the scope of grace. Mm -hmm. The scope of grace. It says, we have all received. These four words clarify the extent and the scope of this grace. Mm -hmm. They clarify to whom this grace is offered and to whom this grace is available. Yes, God's grace comes through his son, Jesus Christ. All right. The good news is that this grace is offered to all of us mm -hmm. and is available to all of us. All right. Grace is available to all of us who are a part of fallen humanity. Well, but it is not available to fallen angels. Mm -hmm. There is no redemption for the angels who lost their first estate. Mm -hmm. When angels fell, God prepared a place called hell for them. But when humans fail, God sent his son to die for them. Yeah. All right. All right. That is why the songwriter wrote, God gave me a song that the angels cannot sing. All right. I've been washed in the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed. What's more, 
to some extent, this grace is active in every one of us, whether we recognize it or not. This grace surrounds us from our birth to our death. And if we receive this grace, it will surround us even beyond the grave. Truth is the vehicle by which this grace comes to us. So it is significant that not only does grace come to us through Jesus Christ, but truth also comes to us through Jesus Christ. Right. And I get a witness in this house. Then yeah. I'll go on to my third point. Thirdly, our text gives us insight into the stages of grace. Mm -hmm. The stages of grace. It says grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, I call it grace on top of grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this does not mean that there are different kinds of grace but that there are different aspects, mm -hmm. different phases or different stages of grace. Mm -hmm. This means that there are different ways of experiencing the grace of God. Right. In fact, the phrase grace upon grace is so pregnant with meaning that I wanna spend the rest of my time today expounding on the four stages of grace. Mm -hmm. Or you could say on the four ways that we can experience God's grace. Mm -hmm. Initially, we can experience God's prevenient grace. Mm -hmm. God takes the initiative in our salvation. Mm -hmm. And through his prevenient grace, he pursues us. Amen. Some have said that prevenient grace is the grace that searches us out and leads us home even before we are aware that we are lost. All right. All right. Prevenient grace is literally the grace of God that goes before our salvation. Mm -hmm. Because of our sinful nature and human depravity, we are incapable of seeking after God on our own. Yes. Prevenient grace is God drawing us to himself mm -hmm. and preparing our hearts to respond to the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, shows us our need for a savior and urges us to repent of our sins. Prevenient grace restores our free will and thus enables every person to choose to come to Christ or not. Right. Prevenient grace works in combination with the hearing of the gospel and will result in our salvation if we respond to that gospel with genuine repentance mm -hmm. and saving faith. Mm -hmm. By being converted, we can experience God's justifying grace. All right. Genuine repentance and saving faith will lead to our conversion. Mm -hmm. The word regeneration describes what God does in us at the moment of our conversion. Mm -hmm. At that moment, he gives us a spiritual rebirth and makes us new creatures in Christ. He also puts in us the life of God, mm -hmm. the nature of God, the spirit of God, and the love of God. However, the word justification describes what God does for us at the moment of our conversion. Uh -huh. At that moment, he forgives all our sins. Uh -huh. He reconciles us to himself. Uh -huh. He gives us right standing with God. Uh 
-huh. He also declares us righteous, imputes his righteousness to our account, mm -hmm. and adopts us into his family. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul alluded to this justifying grace in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access into this grace in which we stand. Mm -hmm. Paul alluded to it again in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, for by grace you have been saved yeah. through faith. Mm -hmm. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, yeah. not the results of works, yeah. so that no one may boast. Mm -hmm. These and other passages inspired the teaching referred to as justification by faith. Uh -huh. They revealed that it is not our deeds that make us right with God, and it is not our works that merit grace from God. Instead, it is our saving faith that allows us to be justified by God and to experience his justifying grace. Amen. As we grow in Christ, we can experience God's sanctifying grace. Mm -hmm. Whereas prevenient grace is the grace of God working in us before salvation, mm -hmm. and justifying grace is the grace of God working in us at the moment of salvation, mm -hmm. sanctifying grace is the grace of God working in us after salvation. Mm -hmm. It is the Holy Spirit working in us as we grow in the grace of God, as we grow in the knowledge of God, and as we grow in the love of God. Sanctification is a process that begins at conversion and continues until our death, our translation. It is a process of spiritual growth through which God gives us both the desire and the ability to do what pleases him. It is also a process of character development through which we are being renewed after the image of Christ. Furthermore, it is a process of life transformation through which we are dying to sin and becoming alive to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Still further, sanctification is a process of increasing usefulness to the kingdom of God uh -huh. through which we are set apart unto God for meaningful ministry, for dynamic Christian witness, mm -hmm. and for effective disciple making. Mm -hmm. Moreover, sanctification is a process of maturing love through which we learn how to love God and how to treat people mm -hmm. and through which we learn to pursue both personal and social holiness. Hallelujah. But eventually we can experience God's glorifying grace. Uh -huh. We have seen today that justification is an event that takes place the moment of our conversion. Yeah. It enables us to affirm that we have been saved from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. We have also seen that sanctification is a process that begins at our conversion, but continues until our death and our translation. Mm -hmm. It enables us to affirm that we are being saved mm -hmm. from the power of sin. But glorification yeah. is an expectation or a hope that finds fulfillment at the moment of our death, our translation. And it enables us to affirm that we will be saved from the presence of sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
One day we will be delivered from the consequences of sin being in this world. Yes, the day is coming when there will be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more suffering, and no more dying for the people of God. There will just be, wait for it, wait for it, glory. In Romans chapter 8, verses 17 through 22, Paul describes glorification. He wrote, and I quote, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be, listen, listen, glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the, here it is, glory that is about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage and decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. End of quote. Glorification is the changing of our mortal bodies into immortal bodies, into bodies that are just like Christ's body. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this mortal must put on immortality and this corruptible must put on incorruption. Glorification won't just change the state of humankind, but it will also change the state of all creation that was corrupted by the fall of Adam. Then not only will the redemption of our bodies be complete, but the redemption of all the cosmos will be complete. Woo! If I can get enough witnesses, I'll go to my conclusion. All right. All right. I think I hear some witnesses. In summary, Grace comes through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Grace is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. And grace is experienced in four ways. Mm -hmm. Provenient grace draws us to God. Justifying grace makes us right with God. Sanctifying grace transforms us so that we can please God. And glorifying grace resurrects us so that we can be like Christ and spend eternity with God. Mm -hmm. God wants everyone to be saved mm -hmm. and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh -huh. God loves us so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Yes, this grace comes through Jesus Christ. It's offered to everyone, but it is forced on no one. Mm -hmm. It is by this grace that we are saved. Mm -hmm. It is a gift from God that cannot be earned, but like all gifts, it must be received. Mm -hmm. The first step in receiving this gift and being saved is genuine repentance. Mm -hmm. We must confess that we are sinners, must want to change, uh -huh. and must recognize that we cannot change ourselves. That's right. That's right. The second step is saving faith. We cannot just believe in God or just trust him for things. We must trust Christ's sacrificial death to make us right with God, mm -hmm. not our morality, good deeds, or church work. Mm -hmm. The third step is true commitment. With our mouths, but from our hearts, 
we must invite Jesus Christ into our lives as Lord and Savior. You can receive this grace and be saved today. Just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord, I confess I am a sinner. I turn from my sins and I turn to you. I believe you died for me and rose for me. I open my heart to you. Come into my life. Forgive all my sins. Save my soul and change my life. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer, right. heaven is rejoicing with you right now, and we are too. Mm -hmm. Let Pastor Murray know that you received assurance of salvation today. Right. He will share with you some things that will help you to grow in your salvation and make progress toward an abundant life. Mm -hmm. In obedience to Christ, you need to be baptized if you have never been baptized. You also need to join a church if you are not already a member of a church so that you can be discipled properly. And I know that the Metropolitan Church will be glad to receive you. Now let's give God the praise as I turn the rest of this service over to our pastor, Reverend Murray. We thank Bishop Barnes for that powerful message. Grace upon grace. And I know we all want to get to that last stage Amen. of glorification. Amen. 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 Bishop, you have preached a powerful message. We have received that message. We thank God for you for sharing with us today. We'll have a final song before our benediction.
the church say amen. amen. Church say amen again. Amen. Once again, we thank Mr. Sarge for really powerful words. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. Grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. Amen. Thank you for the word. And we thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate your kind feedback. Please continue to send us your prayer requests. Because we believe that prayer is real. My brothers and my sisters, until next time, at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, may God bless and keep you. May God be merciful unto us. Bless us. God has faced the time. Thank you again, Pastor Murray, and I too thank everyone for your um, encouraging comments in the chat in the chat uh, box. I think I, I see the talented, gifted, and anointed Reverend Ariane Williams, and it's so good to see her. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God is really using her. She was the one who developed the study guide for this first year of our quadrennial theme, which focuses on strengthening our fellowship. And so we're so proud of you, Reverend, Reverend Williams, that God is using you not only to uh, touch lives as a chaplain at the, I think it's Indianapolis University, but also to just impact people throughout our denomination and beyond with your writing gift. And again, Pastor, I'm so blessed by the worship uh, today and the study yesterday. And always grateful to have my honey bun with me, uh, Sister Camille Starnes. Let us look to the Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, May the love of God, the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us both now and forevermore. Let us all say amen.